Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Another pretty day. So this morning, we are going to read from 1 Samuel. It's 1 Samuel 15. It's verse 34 through uh, 1613. So it's 1534 through 1613. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint from, for me, for me him who I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab, and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. But behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, uh, I want you to do something for me. Think about a time and a person that uh, somehow helped you out. They, whatever it might be. So just kind of take your time. You can actually push, push pause on this. Pretty cool. Um, and just take your time and, and uh, think of somebody that helped you out at some point in time. So you got them? Got them in here? All right, so just kind of keep that person in your in your mind for for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so we got this passage here, and um, you know Saul's king and and all this stuff, and and what's going on here? You know, because the Lord's rejected Saul, right? So what happens right before this? Um, the Lord got told Saul to go out, and um, and there's a battle with his army and uh, God told uh, Saul to wipe him out 
that they don't need, they just, they need to be completely wiped out and everything done away with. So Saul's fought a couple of battles at this point. So he went and fought the battle, but uh, he didn't completely wipe them out. He kept the king, he's going to keep the king as prisoner. He took a bunch of plunder and stuff like that and was going to bring it back to have a sacrifice, have a sacrifice to God. So, um, so he didn't do what God asked. So uh, Samuel had to go and he had to take care of that. So he, but at that point it was already done. So God had already rejected Saul as king and it was over. So that doesn't mean that Saul stopped being the acting person as king at that point. So if you keep reading, you'll see all that struggle that happened. Uh, but, but that's where we are at this point. So, so that's kind of the setup and, <clears throat> and everything. But then you see God sends Samuel to, um, uh, you know, to, to Jesse to, to, because there's already a king. He, he, God says, look, I've already got a king appointed through, through Jesse's son to succeed Saul. Um, so Samuel goes out and, um, and remember, and just so you remember too, Samuel's the, is the high priest, right? He's like the, the priest of everybody. Remember Samuel's the one that grew up as a little boy in the temple doing the Lord's work and grew up basically doing God's work. So that's who Samuel is. So Samuel goes out to Jesse, goes through all his sons, um, and comes to the end and he even has to ask Jesse, hey, is, is everybody here? Um, and finally anoints David. And it even says David's, if you get into some of the Hebrew texts and stuff like that, it's David is the youngest, but not only the youngest, he's kind of the smallest one out of them. So, um, and he's the one that gets anointed. So, and, and at that point, it even says in scripture, the spirit of God rushed upon David from that point forward. Um, now, if you keep reading after, you also see the spirit of God left Saul at that point. So effectively, Saul uh, became stopped being king, and David, you know, got the favor of the Lord at that point. So even though um, Saul does not stop act, being the active king, you know, he's the one that's in charge in the you know in kingdom and all that stuff. Um, but you know, in reality, David is the one that's got God's favor now. So it's it's kind of interesting to me that that all this stuff happens, but you know the people in the kingdom see, you know somebody you know they still see Saul. Um, so it's 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 neat to see how things happen on God's time. You know it's not our time. It's not the way we want it to happen or anything else. It's all the way God needs it to happen, and it happens with His time. And that's just the way it goes, right? He's God and we're not. So, um, and, but, but all this stuff, you know, all the, the, the changing of the guard here that you kind of see, all this happened because Saul went out and tried to do it the way he saw fit, right? God gave him orders. He had orders of what to do with the army that the army you know he was going to go out and, and defeat this this people and what to do you know with everybody and everything to just nothing left um and i know it's kind of harsh for us to read that kind of stuff but that's you know that's what was going on so um but you know saul took it upon himself to say well we'll do that, but there's a lot of good stuff here. We can bring it back as plunder and we can still do a sacrifice to God with it. Oh, that's good. You know, we can have a big sacrifice and feast and, you know, honor God with all this stuff, you know, but he, but you see, that's the thing is he tried to take it upon himself of, of what he thought was going to be pleasing to God, not what God wanted. And maybe it maybe is a little bit of a, you know, an excuse that he was trying to make because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. 
And and the thing is, is so if you take and remember when you when you read scripture, right? <clears throat> it, it's it's going to apply. Scripture is, and you got to decide for yourself too, right? But when you read scripture, one of the things you're looking for is is this transcendent, right? So does it does does this thing apply to then? which obviously it does, but it does also apply to now. So does it transcend time uh, and even transcend people? Yeah, it applied to these people. Could it apply to us? So you've got to kind of look at it, you know, and sit back and say, you know, well, how does it apply to me? Could it apply to me? Right? And kind of really get into it. So <clears throat> if, you, if you think about it, have you ever done anything where you try to, you know, go out and enforce God's will or something, something you did that you thought you were doing for God. All right, any hands? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think probably everybody has, right? But doing something for God is not necessarily doing God's will, right? God doesn't need... He doesn't need our help, right? Um, you know, he, need, he needs us to just show up and do what he wants us to do. <laughs> so, you know, and a lot of times we will go out of our way trying to, trying to do things that are maybe pleasing for God or we try to, you know, <clears throat> one of the things we try to do all the time is affect our own, you know, in some way or shape or form. We still <clears throat> have this... Um, this feeling or belief or something that we somehow affect our own salvation, right? That and that's where it's it's a little subtle thing because we still are worried about our sins, right? Uh, I mean, trying to think about your sin and what did you do, what did you not do, and doing things better and right, all this stuff. So we still there's a lot of focus on sin, which is. You know, if you read scripture, you know, get, you know, it says in scriptures, you know, look, your sin is as far as the east from the west. It's completely atoned for. It's done. Um, and so God is the one who did away with sin. The effect of sin is gone. Doesn't mean you're not a sinner. It means, you know, <clears throat> unless you're the one that sits there and dwells on it, it has no power. As far as the east from the west. I mean, how far is that? Right? I mean, you can. So Jesus came and atoned for our sins. Our sins are forgiven. But for some reason, we still dwell on it. We still think we can go fix it. Um, so, you know, in some way, we're not far removed from Saul, right? I mean, Saul was out doing his thing. I would have do some stuff for God, you know, bring back a sacrifice. Um, so, you know... There, there's a lot of things that we do where we might be getting in the way of what God needs us to do or wants us to do or wants for our life, wants us to be able to appreciate and live out, right? Okay, so, so do me a favor. Think back, that person that you thought about that helped you out. Give you a minute. So you got them? And think about how you felt about that person, how they helped you out. And maybe it's something, you know, something that they helped you out with that was so big that there's no way you can pay them back. You know, it's, it's not, it's not like a, a, they just helped you out to serve so much, whatever, whatever an extent that <clears throat> there's no way you could pay them back for it. And, you know, so if you think about, you know, what can you do? Well, one of the things you probably would do is you could, if you run across somebody and it comes up, you probably tell other people about it. Man, he helped me out so much. You don't even know it. I mean, he, he did this and this for me. I really appreciate it. There's no way I could pay the guy back. But, you know, I'll tell you what, he's a really good guy. If you ever, you know, that's somebody I would actually put my trust in. That's somebody I, could, I know stood up for me and I'd definitely stand up for him, you know. So, when you're thinking about that person like that, 
um, you're probably not thinking about any of the bad stuff that you've done, are you? You're just completely consumed with all the good stuff that this person has done for you and going out and bragging about them and all that kind of stuff. So you're actually in a point, at, at a point and in, 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 in speaking about positive things. You're talking about things that are good and, and, and really great, right? You're not focused on anything negative, right? So think about how much God has helped you out. Think about all the stuff that God did for you. It's, you, you can't name it all, can you? I mean, the biggest thing is God sent his son to take, to take care of our sins for us and left us with the Holy Spirit to help guide us through life. Somebody here with us that we could, you know, somebody to, to hang out with and hold on to. He did all that stuff for you. There's no way you can pay it back. Right? So... What are you going to tell people about him? What are you going to go out and say? How are you going to act? All right? Now think about this. All that good stuff you got to say about him, <clears throat> you don't have to quote scripture, do you? You can just talk about the experience that you've got because it's your experience and nobody can take that away from you. Pretty neat, huh? And when you're doing that, look at the look at the good mood you're in. Look at the, the the cool things you're talking about. Look at all that. And not one time are you focused probably on the sins that you've got. Because you're focused on all the good stuff that God has done for you. So instead of instead of going out and focusing, you know, getting down in the doldrums and trying to, to focus on what you're not doing right, if you focus on what God has done for you, to took that away, the only thing that's left is for you to, to live in that good spot, to live in that good place, which is what he wants for you anyway. So you know, when you, when you find yourself in that spot and you're trying to be Saul, right? You're trying to do some work for God instead of doing what God wants you to work for for him. Take a step back and slow down and just say, hey, just think about all the stuff that's God done for you and find that good place. Go back and find that good place, right? And, and enjoy it. And just hang on to that and go brag about what God has done for you that you'll never be able to repay him and there's no way but one of the things you can do is go out and tell everybody what he's done for you and that's plenty to lean on as you go through this world to so enjoy the day and then go enjoy your life because that's what he wants for you let's pray Thank you, good Lord, for loving us, and thank you for giving us uh, all the things that you do, all the things that you've given us, your Son, your Holy Spirit, and you, and all your love. And thank you so much for pouring that out into us so we can give it right back to everybody that we see. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.